around about the time, and this may be coincidence, mm-hmm. but around about the time that uh, XDG app was renamed to Flatpak. Mm-hmm. And which is a way better name. Which is much better. Uh, around about that time, uh, I think we were in a company event in um, The Hague. Uh-huh. And I remember sitting in a hotel in The Hague in a meeting room where we were being told we absolutely need to focus on desktop applications. Mm-hmm. Now, because the Snap packaging system had mostly been designed around small embedded devices like top of rack switches, mm-hmm. routers and stuff, there were bits missing for doing desktop applications. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was quite a task to get desktop applications packaged as a Snap. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is at the time you basically bundled everything in the snap. Um, it took a while before we could break out stuff like um, GNOME libraries that were needed into their own, what we call content snaps mm-hmm. and the KDE bits into a KDE content snap. It took a while. And so in the early days, most snaps were quite chunky and contained basically everything mm-hmm. you needed. Um, and, and, desktop applications aren't used to being confined or certainly weren't then they were they would expect to be able to just write to dot files in your home directory yeah, and yeah. they would be ex- expect to be able to read from files in etc and with the confinement that snap brought it made that stop working those yeah. applications broke when we mm-hmm. snapped them and so we had to jump through lots of hoops and sometimes patch the upstream mm-hmm. programs and provide fixes to snap d itself and so it was quite hard getting some of these applications packaged mm-hmm. you would you get into a pattern like mm-hmm. you'd get a gtk3 app working and, we, and then you've got a pattern there for most gtk3 apps right, right. um and then you get a kde app working and you'd get a pattern for doing kde ones mm-hmm. and then you get an electron app working and now we've got a pattern for doing electrons so it was a lot of work early on getting the first i don't know hundred to 200 applications in the store Mm -hmm. once you got past 200 300 500 the rest were a lot easier and it was less about the technical uh how do i get this packaging done and it was more about the softer side of how do we get these people to buy into the Mm -hmm. fact that as well as building a deb or instead of building a deb they now need to build a snap and they've got to upload it to the store so they've got to build a pipeline to upload it to the store and they've probably got to test it as well and some of the these developers just didn't want to do it mm-hmm. um partly because i've already got a deb why should i make another package mm-hmm. all the fedora people are covered with the rpm all mm-hmm. the ubuntu and debian people are covered with the deb i don't need this thing and so it took a lot of conversations to fine tune the message that we would use to sell snaps to uh organizations and i i don't mean sell us in financially there was never any financial like incentive mm-hmm. it was you know trying to sell it as a concept of mm-hmm. well you could just do one package and it'll work across all the releases of ubuntu and all these other distros as well um was the one of the selling points mm-hmm. and you're in control of publishing you can publish it to the store whenever you like. yeah there was a whole load of advantages that we would sell mm-hmm. um but even then some of them there's one very notable application you have heard of and you may have also used Mm -hmm. that when we first got in contact with the developer it's a proprietary application that everyone knows the name of and we first got in contact with them Mm -hmm. and we spoke to an engineer and he said always remember this he said linux equates to about one percent of my user base Uh you have one percent of my attention and so when when someone tells you that like it's quite brutal like sure. when they say look you're just not as popular as you think you are mm. uh is it's quite harsh anyway it took a year to get that application into the store a year from first conversation with the guy multiple meetings multiple iterations of their application and then it got published in the store mm-hmm. and now it's like one of the top five applications in the store mm-hmm. so you know it, it took a lot of work and i think that's one of the reasons why snaps took off for however you want to define took off how snaps took off for the desktop apps is because canonical were paying a bunch of people to go out there and do this Mm -hmm. and unfortunately the other you know app image is basically three people 
going around packaging stuff, doing an amazing job of doing it. They got so many things packaged as app images, and Flatpak is a community of people. Yeah. Um, and so well, Flatpak yeah, nowadays that... also has the support of Fedora behind it. Like they're really mm -hmm. sort of pushing that side with you know with Silverloo and all of that. Yeah, but they didn't have people going yeah, out. Yeah, it's not like they have that. To... Yeah, they're not sending out engineers yeah. to do it. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that and that helped us. Like, so I think the Snap Store's got like five thousand snaps in the store now. Um, wow. And you know, some of them have a lot of users, mm -hmm. like a lot, and uh, and that and that's that's great, and mm -hmm. it's it's great. I can look back on that period, and you know see the successes we had with some high profile applications and stuff everyone's heard of mm -hmm. that's in there and conversations we had with engineers from those organizations um and, and i can see that as a success now mm -hmm. you know people in the linux community don't see it that way sure they see it as canonical trying to build a walled garden around mm -hmm. the linux app ecosystem okay like whatever um but it naturally makes sense with having all these applications packaged and all the frameworks packaged that you would then make a fully immutable snap desktop mm -hmm. and this is not the first time this has been worked on there's been projects inside canonical it was previously called ubuntu personal was the was that's the a, name given not a good name <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy that's not the one they've gone with yeah it's just a they, part they, of LTS they, they were trying now. to like brand it distinctly sure no i get that ubuntu yeah uh, but this was a while ago this was uh I think Ubuntu Personal was like 2016, mm -hmm. that kind of era. Uh, and none of it was ready. Like you just couldn't put all these things on the desktop and expect them to work because yeah. it was all read only and stuff would just break. Yeah, yeah. And so it would just, none of it was mature enough. But mm -hmm. because of a lot of the work that the Flatpak guys have done, yeah, with the portals and yeah. like, yeah, all of that kind of stuff, that helps. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not surprised that there's there's an all snap desktop coming. 